This is Greg Denweiler, and you are listening to another episode of The Dividend Mailbox, a podcast about dividend growth. Our goal is to stuff your mailbox full of dividend checks and make each year's check larger than the last. In this episode, we will explore the question of whether to focus on dividend growth or just invest for maximum yield. In the first episode, we looked at the contribution dividends made to the S&P 500's return over time, and it has been almost half. We also looked at the growth rate of dividends from the S&P 500, and it has been about 6% annually for the last 100 years. Now we want to consider why a growing dividend is so important. Let us first look at the returns of the S&P 500 since 1980. Why 1980? Because it makes the chart look better. Actually, that is something that you should always keep in mind. Why somebody picks the date they do on a chart. But anyway. No, actually returns before 1980 favor dividends even more. If you invested $136 in 1980 and you only consider price appreciation by the end of 2020, you would have $3,756. If you add in the dividend and reinvest those dividends, your account is now up to $10,556. Now let's step back and think about this for a minute. In the last four decades, the dividend of the S&P 500 has averaged about 2.5%. Price appreciation in the 80s was 12%. The 90s saw the market average 15%. In the decade of the 2010s, price gains averaged almost 11%. So you have the price component for each of those periods being as much as five times the dividend return. So how can adding the dividend nearly triple the total return of the account in 20 years? As our friend Albert Einstein states, compounding is the eighth wonder of the world. So now, we circle back to why invest in dividend growth over just buying the highest dividend yield. The answer is that you want compounding of the dividend, the cash you receive, you want that compounding over time. Even more important is the fact that companies who have growing dividends tend to be higher quality investments. Simply put, Companies that consistently grow their dividend, by default, also have to grow their earnings. This has all kinds of assumptions embedded in it. This will be a topic of another episode. Dividend growers tend to have lower debt. They tend to have some form of a moat, which helps protect the business and their margins. They tend to be less aggressive, making acquisitions, which many times dilute shareholders. This translates into being more shareholder-friendly as opposed to an empire-building mentality. There is always a trade-off. Companies that have a track record of dividend growth almost always have a lower yield when you first invest. That is because investors are willing to pay more for growth. Is it better to start with a company that pays a dividend of 2% but has a history of raising it 6% annually? or just start with an investment that pays a 6% dividend. If you want income, your first response might be, just give me the 6% now. Now let's think through both investments and what they could mean in 20 years. Suppose you have $10,000 and buy a company that pays a 2% dividend. We will call this Investment A, which is close to the S&P 500 yield. Your first year you receive $200. The company then grows the dividend by 6% annually, resulting in a $605 check in year 20. If you took investment B, which is the 6%, on $10,000 is $600 per year for the next 20 years. Isn't that a lot better than waiting 20 years just to get 600 
The best way to answer this question is to again look at your account value in 20 years. If the S&P 500 has a 2% yield in 20 years, that means your $10,000 has grown to $30,000. A 2% yield on $30,000 is $600, which is what you are receiving in dividends on year 20. Your initial 6% investment B is still paying 6%. So the original 10000 is still worth $10,000 in year 20. Of course, you accumulated 12000 in dividends over 20 years. However, 22000 is way below 30000 plus another $7,000 from your dividend growth account. Last I checked, 37000 was a much greater number than 22000 And we're not done yet. Let's say in year 20, you decide to take your 37000 and just reinvest it at 6%. You would then start earning $2,200. This is a lot to digest, so we have created a paper illustrating the growing dividend versus no growth dividend with charts and graphs so you can actually visualize the difference. Just go to our website under Observations of the Market at www.growmydollar.com. To further illustrate that higher dividend rates do come with a cost, Bloomberg had a chart that showed several different investments and what their worst rolling one-year return was for the last 20 years. At the end of 2020, MLPs, otherwise known as Master Limited Partnerships, which are usually natural gas pipelines, were paying 10%. Their worst one-year return was minus 61%. Real Estate Investment Trust paid 3.6%, but had a one-year decline of 59%. The S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats, companies that have raised their dividend every year for the last 25 years, had a dividend yield of 2.7% in December of 2020. However, their worst year performance was a decline of 35%. Quality does pay off. MLPs and REITs tend to use more debt, so in times of stress, investors get nervous. Dividend growth investing is not a silver bullet. It does take patience and discipline for it to work. And the real benefits come after the first decade when compounding really kicks in. A few ideas on what to look for in the dividend growers will be in the next episode. If you liked today's podcast, please leave us a review and follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. If you would like more information regarding dividend growth or just our style of investing, go to growmydollar.com. There you will find some of our previous podcasts and also our monthly newsletter. Past performance does not guarantee future results. Each investor should consider whether a strategy is right for them and consider all the risks involved. Dividend stocks are volatile and can lose money.